Greetings booktubers and welcome back to Grammaticus Books. What we got on tap for you here today is the three-body problem, or I should say the problem with the three-body problem. Are there problems with it? Oh yes, there are. There are numerous problems with it, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, but first, a bit of an explanation as to how this video came about. Um, when I first made the decision to start making booktube videos, uh, I was highly influenced by a number of booktubers that I really enjoy and I subscribe to. And those booktubers are uh, Criminali, uh, Michael K. Vaughn, Steve Donahue, the late great Pax Panic, uh, and uh, Bookpilled. And one of the things that I did when I was watching their videos is I saw uh, topics that I thought hadn't been covered by these excellent booktubers and that I could cover or cover from a different angle than they had. And I made a list. And I came up with a list of about 30 to 35 uh, different videos that I could make. And the problem with the three-body problem was right dead center in the middle of that at about number 15. I couldn't put that uh, video ahead of videos about Conan the Barbarian or classic vintage science fiction and fantasy. Those had to go to the top of the list. But I was working my way through that list and it gotten down to about number 10. So this video was going to be like three or four in the future when Book Pilled, dang him, went and made a video about the three-bodied problem. And he made an excellent video about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to link in the description a, a link to Book Pilled's video on the three-body problem. I highly encourage you to go and check it out and check out his channel. It's a really good channel. And Book Pilled and I are in complete agreement on this book, The Three-Body Problem. And that doesn't always happen. Book Pilled is great at how he analyzes the books. Um, he really knows how to go into them. He does a thorough uh, and very good analysis of literature, particularly science fiction literature. That's his... That's a genre that he likes the best, but we tend to like different types of things. Um, it's just a, a personal thing, but on this book, we are in complete agreement. So what's this book about? Um, I'm imagining that most of the people who are watching this video have heard of this book. It's immensely popular. All, all 12 people who are watching this video probably have heard of it, but on the off chance that you haven't heard about it, it's a science fiction novel. It's a hard science fiction novel that was written by the Chinese author, Sin Shin Lu, and it's about an alien invasion of Earth. It's an alien invasion of Earth that was invited by a fifth column from Earth of Chinese scientists who discover this alien uh, society, the Trisolarans, and then communicate with them with radio waves and invite them to come to, to invade Earth and remake it because they have become disillusioned uh, with humanity. And in a nutshell, that's the book. So. This book was released and it immediately received critical acclaim as one of the best science fiction books of the year. It won a Hugo Award for best science fiction book of the year. It was praised by Barack Obama, Mark Zuckerberg. It sold millions of copies. It had almost universal acclaim from book critics. And uh, with Goodreads, I think it's rated at 4.1 out of 5 with 288,000 uh, reviews on Goodreads. And it's rated at 4.3 out of 5 on Amazon uh, with about 40,000 reviews on Amazon. So what makes this book so good? Why was it so popular? And what's the problem with it? The problem is this book's awful. There's just, there's no way to, to sugarcoat this one or to, to butter it or smooth it over or use some euphemism to lighten the, the, critic of, the critique of it. It's god awful. This is a god awful book, uh, and uh, Book Pill feels the same way about it as I do. And I felt very strongly about it when I first read it, and I didn't understand uh, how it could receive such great acclaim. But I have a theory on that, and that's what's coming up. But this book is just terrible. It is objectively bad. It's an objectively bad book. It's a demonstrably bad book. By any literary measuring stick that you want to hold up to it this book fails, and, and it fails it fails terribly. Um, for instance, the characters in this in this book, they're very flat. Uh, Sin Shin Lu has written a book that is filled with one-dimensional characters, and on top of that, these one-dimensional characters, they don't have any type of character arc to speak of throughout this novel from start to finish. They start off flat one-dimensional, they stay flat one-dimensional, and they don't change who they are over the course of the book. And sometimes 
that you can make that work. You can make it kind of interesting and fun. Like say you've got the the classic cardboard cutout villain and you just run them as the over the top villain. And it can actually, that can actually be fun to read. It's not great literature, but it's fun to read. But with Sinshin Liu, he has these flat one dimensional characters. And on top of that, and I'm gonna use some four letter he words here. So if you don't like four letter words, this will be the time for earmuffs. They are fucking dull. <laughs> these, these characters are so uninteresting and so one dimensional that they're just terrible. Um, and I don't like using harsh language, but in this case, I, I believe it's deserved. These are just badly written characters that are just dull, painfully dull to read about. Um, on top of that, the plot, there's very little change in the plot. There's very little development in the plot over the course of the entire novel. You get this alien invasion coming up, you get a couple little bumps in the road, but there's nothing really that takes it and moves it significantly from where the book starts to where the book finishes. So it just remains uninteresting. You have uninteresting flat characters, you have an uninteresting plot. In addition to that, I'm gonna jump back to the characters a little bit. The characters periodically throughout the book will behave in irrational ways that don't fit the flat one-dimensional character that Sinshin Liu has written into them and all of a sudden they will just behave in a, in a way that makes no sense to their dull, uninteresting character. And then they'd come back down and start acting back in their, in their original form. And there's no explanation to it. And it just really disrupts the novel and drags it down from being good literature. And speaking of the literature, we have to talk about the prose. The prose is not well written, but I'm going to give Mr. Sinchin Liu sort of benefit the doubt on this one. This book was not written originally in English. Instead, Sinshin Liu wrote this book uh, in his native Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese, and then it was translated into English. And unlike romance, other romance languages that are gonna have a better one-to-one -one translation in English, you just are not gonna get that in from going from Mandarin into the English language. You're gonna lose a lot of the lyricism, a lot of the flow of the construction of the sentences, a lot of the joiners between the paragraphs are going to come apart a little bit. So I'm going to give him a little bit of credit there. But even giving Mr. Sinshin Liu that credit, if you're writing bad allegories, if you're writing bad metaphors, and you're using overworked, tried descriptions um, to describe your scenes that are just overused cliches, that's not a translation problem. That's a writing problem. And this book is filled with that type of writing on top of the lack of characters and the lack of plot. And the innovativeness of the plot, it's just not there. Alien invasions have been done to death. There are some little bit of new scenes in here. And there was one chapter uh, about an attack on a boat that's going through the Panama Canal that I did like, uh, that I thought was a, a good and interesting chapter and was worthwhile the science fiction book. But overall, there's just not enough new uh, innovation in this book to merit the accolades that it received. And then the last thing, the nail in the coffin for this book for me was the pacing. On top of all of these other problems, you have a pacing that is absolutely glacial and it just drags out and you don't have these interesting characters to keep you hooked into it as the plot just progresses at a snail's pace. And it's just death on this book. And that's why this book has so many problems. Those are the problems with the three-body problem. But you're talking about a book that sold millions of copies, that was praised by Barack Obama, strong praise from Barack Obama, strong praise from Mark Zuckerberg. It got a 4.1 on Goodreads with 288,000 reviews, and it's rated 4.1 out of 5. It's rated 4.3 currently on Amazon, uh, with 40,000 reviews, and it won a Hugo Award for Best Science Fiction Novel of the Year. So did I miss something? Did Book Pill miss something? How was this, this novel able to receive such accolades if we feel it was so bad? And again, I am going to reiterate, it is bad. It's not an opinion. This book is demonstrably bad uh, if it is reviewed honestly. And here's what I think happened, how this book got the accolades that it did. And I think it's a two-part answer. 
The first one is, is that it got a, a serious shot in the arm from the former president, Barack Obama. In fact, it got a shot from the arm from Barack when he was the current sitting president. And Barack Obama has a serious number of followers, people who uh, respect his view that run in the tens and tens of millions, probably the hundred, even, you know, into the hundreds of millions. Pardon me while I take a quick drink of something here. And the hundreds of millions here in the United States and abroad. And that gave the book a serious shot in the arm. And people who might have read it without a bias at that point, I think, had a positive bias for it based on um, their liking of and their support of the former president. Because that thing will kind of thing will happen. With President Barack Obama, why did he give it such a, such a positive review? I think he's a very smart guy. And I think he was a, he's a politician. And I think he was playing a little politics. He knew that if he could uh, give this book a glowing review, that it wouldn't hurt him with the Chinese government. And it was a little bit of politics, very small bit of politics, but he's a very good, smart guy. It's just a little bit you can add on here and there. And I think it was, it was a, a, a political nod of the hat to the Chinese government in order to improve relations uh, with the Chinese Communist Party. That's my personal view. I can't back it up. It's just my opinion. But I think there's a, a strong chance that uh, that could be why he gave it the praise that he did. And the other thing is, is that it's a non-American novel from a non-American novelist, from a Chinese novelist. He's not only is he not an American author, he's not even a Western author. And when this book was released, and unfortunately still to today, as Steve Donahue has said um, several times in his videos, I believe this is a book that wasn't meant to be reviewed. It was a book that was meant to be praised. Um, and it wasn't meant to be critiqued. And if you critiqued it, you were going to uh, unfortunately be the subject of a lot of uh, derogatory comments. And so people didn't critique it with an honest bias. I think the goalpost on it got moved. It was given a different set of standards than a, a um, traditional American author would have received or even any other type of Western author. They took the goalpost that normally sits there on the end zone in the end line, and then they put it all the way up at the 50 yard line, um, basically because it was from a person who was writing this out of China. And I think it got the benefit of that, uh, benefit of that uh, bias that's currently going on, unfortunately, in some aspects of the media, particularly when it comes to literature these days. And between those two, I think it gained in momentum and sort of took on the aspect of uh, the emperor's new clothes and you weren't allowed to critique the fact that the emperor wasn't wearing any clothes, that there weren't any characters who had any depth, there weren't any characters who had any development, that the plot wasn't that innovative, that the plot didn't really progress from the start of the book to the end of the book uh, noticeably and that the pacing in it was was really god awful and then induced sort of a, a mass hypnosis on a large number of readers who felt compelled to praise it because it was receiving all this other praise and it never really got an honest review from numerous i'd say the majority of the regular book critiquers out there and thank goodness for book pill for having the courage to step up um, and call it out for what it is it's a bad book and that is, in a nutshell, the problem with the three-body problem is it's a bad book. You know, I usually have the book so I can hold it up in my hand and show it to you guys. And I don't have the book to hold up in my hand because I'm not going to buy it because it's an awful book that I don't want in my book collection. Uh, it was so bad I couldn't go on. I couldn't, I couldn't put myself through the pain and torture to do the other two in the trilogy. And instead, I'm much better off and much happier holding this cold beer rather than that, uh, that hot, smelly novel in my hand. And I'm gonna take a drink of this beer right now. But that's it. If you disagree with me, I, I'm, I, I like a good spirited debate um, in, a very, uh, in a very congenial manner. I don't, want a, uh, an, I don't want a confrontational debate, but if you disagree with me, please put the reasons that you do disagree with me uh, down below, check out Book Pilled's uh, excellent video on this problem as well, the three-body problem. Um, and let me know what you think, because I'm interested. So that's it for today. My next video is going to be this one right here. It's my first edition. This is my 1965 
copy of Dune, first edition from, and I've had a mind blank on Chilton Press, mind blank on the company that published it. It's my Chilton Press Dune first edition from 1965 that I bought for eight bucks. And it's going to be the story on how I got this for eight dollars. And it's a good one. So tune in for that one. Um, I'm going to try to get that one out here in the next day or two. And in the meantime, take care, be safe, and I hope to be seeing you in the future.